power calculations are about how large does the sample needs to be to detect a given treatment effect. They are essential when you are submitting an evaluation proposal. They basically tell you if the evaluation is actually worth it, if you will be able to detect an effect with a reasonable sample size. There is no point of wasting resources and effort if there is no hope of capturing any effect whatsoever because the required sample size is too large. So it's better to know before you evaluate the program. Yes, you will have to assume many things to come up with a number. If you want to be more realistic, you can probably rely on previous similar programs and studies. Let's take a few minutes for the intuition before we get into the nuts and bolts of power calculation. We want to know how large our sample needs to be so after the program we can say the difference in outcome between treatment and control come from the program. They are not the result of a random event. We want to make sure that those differences are statistically significant. Because even if we randomize treatment and control and the program had no effect at all, we will still observe some minor difference between mean outcome of the treatment and mean outcome of the control. In this graphic, we have 200 observations of the outcome variable in each group. Maybe it's not straightforward to see, but the mean of the control group is zero and the mean of the treatment is 1. If I see this data after a randomized controlled trial and a program intervention, I feel confident saying that the outcome in each group comes from different distributions and to conclude that the program has an effect. If instead I observe this data, I'm not so sure about my conclusion. The difference in mean between treatment and control is the same, 0 and 1. But is this difference a random event? Maybe. Maybe not. Here we still have 200 observations on each group. Suppose I really want to know if the outcome variable comes from different distribution. What I can do is to increase the sample size. Here I have the same outcome but with 1000 observations instead of 200. The more observations I have, the more confident I feel to claim that the difference between treatment and control are systematic. In some cases, however, even if your outcome variable has this much noise, when the program effect is very large, you don't need too many observations. In this graphic, for example, we are able to recognize the treatment effect only with 200 observations, but this is because the effect is way larger. So how many observations do we need? It depends on variation of the outcome and also on the program effect. Of course, we don't know the program effect and that is why we are evaluating. I agree this is kind of circular. The standard practice is to do calculation using the minimum effect that you are willing to detect. Usually the program effect is given in terms of standard deviations. For example, I am interested in a minimum effect of 0.2 standard deviation. Any effect smaller than that, I consider it to be too small and not interesting for me. Or simply there's already a cheaper program that can have that effect. To calculate variation in a perfect world, you use pre-programmed data on the outcome variable. In real life, you use similar data, hopefully, from other regions in the same country. Luckily for us, there is a growing set of available information on previous evaluation. Some websites have available actual dataset. Once you properly reference your sources, there is no problem in using information from similar programs. 